I wanted to leave LA, I was ready to leave LA. Living in a city, there's all this kind of ambient stuff going on all the time. Whether or not you're doing anything, you feel like you're a part of it. You feel like, oh, I'm, I'm busy. So I moved to Tubac, Arizona, to be close to my family. I moved with my son, who's eight years old, and we live on an eight-acre farmhouse. Part of me that felt stripped bare in the city, based on what I was going through personally, but also just living in a city for so long, all of that was addressed coming here. It's a really nourishing thing to be in this environment. That said, it's lonely. It's been very lonely. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean the way in which you really confront yourself. My name is Genevieve Anderson. I'm an artist, director, and a filmmaker. I come to it first as a filmmaker and secondarily as a person interested in puppets. I'm actually not even a puppeteer. I have some very, very primal feeling about diminutive things, small things, and it touched that feeling I had when I was a child of magic coming out of small spaces. In American culture, historically, we really don't have a tradition of, of puppetry here. Our tradition is Topo Gijo, it's the Thunderbirds, it's the Muppets. You know, I was a huge fan of the Muppets, but puppets that I'm working with and what I'm endeavoring to do with the puppets has very little reference in the United States. It's, it comes more from, I guess, in, in a European tradition. It serves a very almost ritualistic, even spiritual function. The puppet can do something that a human actor can't. It isn't sullied by having a human experience. It's completely neutral. So in that sense, it's a very powerful tool. For 35 years, I've been a book crusher. And this is my love story. For 35 years, books have taught me that the heavens are not humane. Neither the heavens nor any man with a head in his shoulders. It's not that men don't wish to be humane. It just goes against common sense. And anyone who crushes books for a living is no more humane than the heavens. But somebody's got to do it. The reason to do Two Out of Solitude with puppets uh, and animation is because we spend very little time in the material realm. <clears throat> Which is a book crusher in a basement crushing books. Book crusher on the street going to the bar, book crusher in the bar. I've drunk so much beer over the past 35 years. I could fill an Olympic-sized pool, an entire fish hatchery. The rest of the time, it's his imagination. I don't really read. I pop a sentence into my mouth, and I suck it like a fruit drop. Many people say that Two Out of Solitude is autobiographical. So I'm starting creating the character from that. For 35 years, I've been alone in this basement. Alone except for the excellent company I find here. Hmm. Paul Giamatti, he knew the book well, and that's sort of the platform that I used to, to ask him, like, if we're doing this adaptation of the book in puppets, would you be interested? And he said yes. <laughs> I did think about him when building the puppet because the voice is so, so integral. Such wisdom as I have comes to me unwittingly. And I look on my brain as a mass of hydraulically compacted ideas. So I should say too that there are two camps of people. When they see this, they go, what, it, Paul, he's an American. You know, you've got this extremely Czech character and then you've got a well-known American actor with an American accent reading the language of this Czech author. And then you've got people who are like, oh, he's great, got his voice, it's so wonderful, it's perfect. The amazing thing about him has been that he has stayed on board. There's been all these starts and stops and he's been like, right there with you. How's it going? You know, he's such a champion of the project. You do all of this work, you set all these things up in the hopes that there'll be a gesture, like a way that something moves or a look or something that opens up this space where something magic comes through. 
You know, there are moments in Too Loud of Solitude, like one or two where I'm like, oh, there it is. I make things as an effort to find something or to give form to something that is formless. So when you, you commit a formless idea to a form, it's disappointing. <laughs> I'll do the molding of the, the figure because I feel like that's really important to have something that's my aesthetic. But then I will hand these things off to people who are good at making the molds or people who can make the puppets and who can do the flocking and the painting and the wardrobe. So I, I hire people to help in that capacity for sure. The next level for me uh, artistically is to create the full feature film of Two Light of Solitude. We created 17 minutes that we finished in um, 2007 and then life intervened and years went by and now we're picking it up again. The work that I do is rooted in a desire to understand myself better spiritually and to understand what we're here to do. And um, I think that you can only really get centered in an approach to those questions when you're lonely. It's really hard to address those things when there's a lot of noise and chaos in your life. So being quiet, being reverent, being grateful, all of those things have provided a great grounding pad for me to, to go back into the work. <laughs>